Hi, in this tutorial we're going to continue about um, layering specularz. So I've saved the file we were working on as 07 begin. I'm going to go ahead, take my blend material. I should actually rename this. I can just go ahead and call it blend specularz. There we go. I'm going to just bring it. Let me make this window bigger so we see better what's going on. So here, I'll move this to the side. Here's my blend material. This is my base material. Then I have my first coat and my second coat. So we're just going to start doing adjustments to our base layer and then our like different coat layers. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to disconnect this remap value that we have here. So we have control. Let me move this out. So we have control over these two sliders because first I want to just work on my base material and then start bringing in my codes. So I'm going to select my code material. Uh, we're going to still work with red word. And the first thing I'm going to do just to give it like a more uh, impressive or more significant effect is that I'm going to bring down my reflection glossiness to maybe 65. Let's see how that works. So we can see this is kind of the specular I'm looking for. We might have to raise our samples. We'll do that later. We're, we'll, we're not really going to worry about that in these couple of scenes. Then when we start working with an actual scene to produce a final image, we'll work about the samples. But in the meanwhile, this is good. This is the kind of specular that I'm looking for, a very soft and broad specular. So with that done, I'm going to go and look for my first code, this guy here. And I'm going to lower this to maybe 85 and just bring it up a little bit. Just by eye, just bring this to like a dark gray. OK, so here you can see we have this soft broad specular, but we've added this very soft um, and more defined specular on top. We don't want to add too much because then we're going to start adding a lot of those clear or unblurred reflections. We want to kind of keep some of that blur reflections and we want to add this specular on top. So that's looking better. We might just need to bring this down even more. So that's better. Just looking at the reflections, that's better. Again, don't worry so much about the noise. We'll, we'll work with the noise when we actually do our final scene. But this is looking a lot better. I might replug this uh, remap value that has the facing ratio. So we're not working with a pure color like this. But we have a color that goes from white to whatever gray we want it to be. But in the meanwhile, I'm just going to leave this here. I'm going to cut it off right now because now I want to work on my second code. And for my second code, we're going to change things a little bit. Instead of using a word, I want to use a blend material just because I want to give it like a more clean specular, very clean reflections. This is going to be like a very thin layer or like a film coat on top of my material. So I'm going to leave everything the way it is. And Glossing as 95, that sounds good. So I'm going to come here and just bring this up a tiny bit just to see what starts happening. So we can right away see here what's going on. We still have these very broad and like blur specular, but now we have very non-blurry reflections and you can see here the specular. I'm actually really interested in the specular more than in the reflections themselves. So something I can do is that I can just bring this down and re-render. I want to lower the contribution of these reflections, but I really I'm really interested in this specular. 
so that's a lot better. I still have this very fine specular. We're getting another little bit of specular here, but I've reduced a lot the reflections because I don't want to have those so strong reflections. So I think this is good. Let's say we're using a value of 0.43. So let's bring this down a tiny bit. I'm going to 0 0.02. And now with these two codes, we really don't need that much of an influence to get that tiny bit of specular. Let's see how it starts looking with the three codes working at the same time. Okay, we cannot really notice, but here's some contribution from our first code. We, from our first code, we can see the contribution from our second code. So let's bring this up just a tiny bit more. Um, 0 0.035, and I just want to pay attention to this right now. Okay, so we have more. I mean, it's it's a very subtle effect, but the more you work and the more you train creating shaders, you can start to see the difference. I know it's very hard to see, but we're getting a little bit more of that circular, which should be like this big specular. So look, we can bring it even more just so you guys can see. And it's there. Let, just for you guys to see it, I'm just going to bring this down and bring this up a tiny bit just so you see what we're looking for. So this is the specular we're looking for. I'm just going to bring it down, down, down. I know it can be sometimes really hard to pay attention to what each shader is doing or what it layer, each layer is doing. So it's a really good exercise to bring it up, just notice exactly which is the part that you're looking for, and then bring it down so you have a tiny bit of a contribution, enough to make your shader look realistic, but not so much that it looks faked or forced. So I'm going to leave this probably at 0.035. Okay, so we have a tiny bit of contribution. It's enough to not like to make the specular look better than the way it already was. And then on this thin layer, I'm gonna bring this to maybe four forty-five. We're gonna have that very fine specular on top of it. There we go. Maybe this could be even lower. Okay, that's good. So let me zoom out, just get the entire sphere, and take a look at what our actual shader looks like. So as you can see, just by layering a couple of specular layers, we're not changing the reflection amount, we're not changing the diffuse. We haven't even started talking about refraction on the one of the next videos. We'll just do a quick exercise to try to create like an ice cube or something like that by layering different components. But just by layering a couple of specular effects, we're getting a way more complex shader where we have some un blurred or some like not glossy reflection but also we have some very glossy speculars but we have a tiny bit and that layering is how most shaders work in real life usually everything either has been painted or has accumulated dust or grease or something so that layering is what will give your shaders a real life like look so for this, I'm just going to leave here. We were just working on like understanding the different concepts. So we're going to stop here, and on the next tutorial, we're going to continue towards more like creating specific shaders. And then at the end of the tutorial, we'll work on a sample scene that I've prepared for you guys, and we'll be able to use all those shading techniques to create our final scene. So I'm going to save this as begin as 07 end, and then on the next lesson we'll start with a new scene. So save as 07 end. There we go. We'll continue on the next lesson.